Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build something cool. So I'm going to be showing you in this video how to scratch build a cathode ray tube. Now, a cathode ray tube is basically a, a vacuum tube that doesn't have any air inside it. And this means that if you put a high voltage across this tube, you'll be able to see a plasma discharge known as a cathode ray. Now this is just a flow of electrons through the air, and this cathode uh, ray can be bent by a magnet to show the physical properties of uh, electrons. So it's a pretty cool experiment, especially if you're trying to understand physics and chemistry to know what electrons are and kind of how they interact. And this experiment, or um, cathode ray tube that you can build, will help understand that. And it is also pretty cool to have a test tube with this glowing purplish blue plasma discharge like this. Now cathode ray tubes may seem like just something that goes on in a science lab. But it actually doesn't. Cathode ray tubes are widely used in the world today as television screens, such as this one. They are also used as oscilloscope screens. This oscilloscope has a cathode ray tube that makes it so that way you can see the waveforms of electricity. This is a cathode ray tube that was taken out of a small TV. And as you can see, it is just a vacuum tube with a phosphor screen. And I'll be explaining kind of how this cathode ray tube works in this video too. But we're not going to be building a super complicated cathode ray tube like this with an electron gun. We're going to be building something out of an old test tube that we can see a plasma discharge and bend it with a magnet. So let's get started. Now there are many different types of cathode ray tubes in the world today, but the one we're going to be doing is the super simple cathode ray tube that requires just two electrodes. So what happens is once we evacuate all the air from this tube, we can apply a high voltage across these two wires. Now the cathode, or the negative end, has many electrons on it, and the anode, or the positive end, has almost no electrons on it. Now this means that these electrons want to flow across this tube, and if there were lots of air particles inside this tube, the electrons would start to flow, but then they'd run into all the air molecules, and they'd be stopped from discharging. But once you remove all the air particles, then the cathode ray, or the electrons, are able to flow from the cathode in a beam across to the anode. Now this forms a cathode ray. Now because electrons are negatively charged, they can be affected by a magnet. So if we put a magnetic field across this tube, this magnetic field will be able to bend the actual cathode ray. It will be able to move it like this and back to the thing, depending on whether we apply uh, a north or south pole to the magnet. We can also do this with permanent magnets or electromagnets to bend the field. Now to build one of these uh, CRTs, you're going to need a test tube and a vacuum chamber and a high voltage power supply. Now this test tube is made of glass because you cannot have a plastic one because these cathode ray tubes get extremely hot during their use and we don't want that heat to melt the plastic. In fact, I had a cathode ray tube that was made of plastic actually implode because of the vacuum inside and the heat of the plastic made it collapse in on itself and it, that wasn't very good. So m make sure to make it out of glass. Now what you're going to want to do to this actual piece of uh, test tube to make it a cathode ray tube is you're going to want to make a hole in the top end <clears throat> to insert an electrode inside. Now to do this you're going to have to heat it up. Now to heat up glass is actually quite easy. So one way you can do it is by using a butane torch. Now this butane soldering iron can be converted to a butane torch by using this little attachment to the end and this melts glass and you can also melt glass by using a homemade Bunsen burner like I showed you in a previous video or you can do what I did and use a Bunsen burner at my school's chemistry lab so what you'll have to do is you'll have to heat up this end of the actual test tube And then once you have it glowing red hot, you're going to blow into this end, 
And what that's going to do is that's going to expand this end and make a little bubble on top, and that bubble will pop. As you can see, after successfully heating up this test tube and blowing through it, I was successfully able to make a small hole in the top of the test tube right here. As you can see, the hole works and it goes into the test tube. This hole is what you can use to insert the electrode inside your tube. Now this little hole is kind of jagged and is very brittle because the way it blew, it immediately cooled off. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to melt this hole again so it's not so jagged on the end. And then we can insert our screw or nail into the hole as our anode. Now to do this, I'm going to be using this butane torch instead of the Bunsen burner. What I'll do is I'll fire it up. As you can see, we got a blue flame inside there. And once I turn it up a little bit, as you can see, I can immediately melt the glass on top. Now I can put this uh, test tube in the flames to heat it up and then I need to melt it enough so that way I can kind of sandwich the hole together to form a tighter hole. I can then insert the screw and then melt the actual glass around the screw. So this is my final cathode ray tube product, and as you can see, there is a nail that has been inserted through the glass into the inside of the tube. Now, the reason it's red right here is because one of my friends was putting copper sulfate into the fire to make it green, and that process caused the glass to be coated by copper sulfate. And that's not really an issue, but it makes the cathode ray tube look pretty cool because it has this red end. Now, after sealing my nail in, I tested it and was sad to find out that it wasn't completely airtight. It wasn't hermetically sealed. So, in order to make it airtight, what I did is I used hot glue to form a seal between the nail and the glass. And this has actually worked very well because the cathode ray tube gets extremely hot during use. And the hot glue is able to melt and form a perfect seal in between the nail and the glass. So this works very well. Now for my vacuum chamber, I'm going to be using this wooden vacuum chamber that I made in a previous video with some minor modifications. So what I did is I entered a copper wire into the tube. This little tube goes into the bottom of the vacuum chamber. As you can see, I have this copper wire that's about 14 gauge and it goes into the little port of the vacuum chamber. And then right above it, the vinyl tubing is inserted in place on it. It is then bent around this little nail I have in the bottom. After that is accomplished, I can then connect the vacuum chamber to the vacuum pump using the vinyl tubing and the copper wire inside. Now bend a, a little um, hump in the copper wire so that way it'll always be touching the middle of this copper pipe of the vacuum chamber. Then you can insert it and tightly seal the vinyl tubing against the copper of your refrigerator pump. Now what happens is then you're going to hook a piece of copper wire here. And this is going to be the cathode of your high voltage power supply because the electricity will flow through the copper pipe of the refrigeration compressor, through the copper pipe inside your vinyl tubing, and then out of this little copper wire right here coming out of your vacuum pump. To attach your cathode ray tube to your vacuum pump, you're going to be needing a little seal. Now I'm using this little tiny piece of rubber that I cut with a hole in the middle that can slide over this little copper wire and onto the hole. As you can see, after turning on the refrigeration compressor, I can insert the cathode ray tube on top of the rubber seal and it'll create a vacuum inside. Now while your cathode ray tube is being pumped down, you can look up your high voltage power supply. Now this is my ZVS flyback driver that I made in one of my previous videos that uses a flyback transformer and a ZVS switching circuit 
to create a very high voltage. Now, I'm also going to be making another video on this to further explain how this works in one of my upcoming videos. Now, what you're going to do with this high voltage power supply is connect it to a variac transformer. This will allow you to adjust the high voltage that is coming off of it, so that way you can create a stable cathode ray without your cathode ray tube getting too hot. So after your CRT has been evacuated of all the air, you should hear no more air flowing out of the vacuum pump. You will then need to connect your high voltage power supply to your vacuum chamber, or CRT, via some clips, alligator clips. So connect one alligator clip to the suction cup of the flyback transformer, this will be the anode, and connect it to the nail on top of your CRT. This should make that connection. You will then need to connect the cathode of your high voltage power supply to the copper pipe of your vacuum pump using uh, another alligator clip wire. So now as you can see, when I turn on the cathode ray tube, you can see a cathode ray, and it's a really deep, cool purple color. When I move my magnet near it, you can see that it bends the cathode ray, depending on how the magnet is near it. It's actually really cool to see. This is a closer image of the cathode ray tube in action. As you can see, it can be easily bent by the hard drive magnet. It's actually really cool to see. So as you can see, that was a really cool experiment. I was able to actually visualize the cathode ray flowing from the cathode to the anode inside this little test tube and observe the effects of a magnet on the electrons. This is how the first scientists were able to actually prove the existence of the electron as a subatomic unit. So this is actually pretty cool because I'm replicating an experiment scientists did many years ago that actually helped prove one of the major elements in physics and chemistry today. So overall, that is how you make a cathode ray tube. I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video. I'm not really sure what it's going to be. It may be something with fixing a microwave or fixing an old inverter or anything. It may even be how to build this ZVS power supply, which I did show in a previous video, but I'd like to make a better explanation for it. So stay tuned.